Yes, good to see you, Coach. Thank you. I have a question for Coach Williams. Uh, go ahead, use the raise hand tool, and we'll start off first with Josh Graham. Go ahead, Josh. Good morning, Coach. Um, you've said a handful of times before getting vaccinated that wearing a mask is easy, but not being able to see my grandkids is really difficult. Since getting vaccinated, have you had felt comfortable enough to see family members, and has your medical staff and the ACC given you any guidance on medical policy for those who have already been vaccinated? Uh, I'll answer the second one first because it's easier. No, I have not received anything from the ACC. I talk to the doctors here all the time about where you stand once you get uh, vaccinated and those kinds of things, but haven't heard anything from the ACC and that's fine because I'm getting enough information already. The first part, uh, you know, I've seen my grandchildren a couple of times. Uh, we went, to, oh gosh, I'm gonna miss this, but we went like 12 weeks without seeing them at all. And we usually never go a week uh, or two weeks at the most. So, but we've been together. The toughest thing is I keep my mask on uh, when I'm rolling around on the floor playing with them and doing those kind of things because it's just so scary. And uh, my last shot, uh, the second shot of the vaccination was uh, uh, Friday, uh, nine days ago or whatever that would have been. So I haven't seen them since that time. Uh, they've been to uh, one game the entire season and, and that's it. Uh, uh, so they always really enjoy uh, coming, but uh, they came to the game, sat in a box with Wanda, and everybody had a mask on. So hadn't been as much fun, but at the same time, we're trying to do the right thing. And I honestly, truly, truly think that wearing a mask and doing everything we can do can can help this situation. Russ Martin, go ahead. Hey, Coach. I'm sure you knew that Tyler Hansborough called the Northeastern game last week. I was wondering if you had any feedback on, on what you heard from that. I know you didn't listen to the call and your thoughts on Hansborough as a play-by-play -play or, or color analyst for, for college basketball or any, any funny stories you heard from that call. Uh, now everybody that has talked to me about it said they thought he really, really did a nice job. I did a podcast with him, I guess it's Monday or Tuesday of last week before uh, game, so I know he's probably a little nervous, but uh, he uh, he understands the game. He's very intelligent about how to play the game, and so when my high school coach and other people say that he really did a nice job, it doesn't surprise me, but needless to say, I haven't heard anything that did it. I mean, I don't get on the computer and know even how to crap to get on there to, to hear him myself, but uh, uh, all the responses and the uh, that I've gotten back is that he really did a nice job. And Tyler's a very bright young man. And and if that's what he decides to do, he will be very good at it because he's going to work at it. He's going to uh, let people coach him. He's going to let people uh, give him advice about yes and no and what's good and what's bad. But uh, uh, the funniest thing when I talked to him on the podcast uh, uh, early last week, I uh, said that he was – uh, just fantastic as a player. I could always trust him, and I'm keeping him as my partner in the golf matches against some of his former teammates. And he said, uh, playing for me was no pressure at all, but playing golf as my partner is a lot of pressure. So <laughs> I just got to make sure he understands I've trust him. CL Brown, go ahead. Hi, Roy. With the, with the second non-conference game this late in the season, um, what are the added benefits maybe, you know, of seeing different styles that that you would face in say the NCAA tournament, as opposed to just you know still going through the ACC grind. You know, see, I haven't thought of that. I would say there might be something to that. You know, we know our ACC guys pretty well. They know us very well, and uh, uh, you do get a little bit of uh, a different outlook from somebody outside the league. But truly, I haven't thought of that at all. That's not what it was intended to do. It's just that if we can play 27 games, we'd like to play 27 games. And uh, I do think that it helps to, uh, particularly as young a team as we have, even at this time of year, which we shouldn't be talking to them as freshmen at this time, but there's different things they're going to see in a game that they need to make reaction to immediately. And so that we can't duplicate in practice. Our blue team cannot duplicate what Northeastern did or what uh, Louisville does or what uh, Marquette does. And so I think it's always a learning experience, but 
our kids like to play games. And if I were a player, I'd be dying to play more games. And so that's the purpose of it right there. And uh, as a follow, um, do you take the win over Louisville? Do you throw that out like you would if you guys lost a game by, by a big margin just because they were, you know, they hadn't played in, in 19 games? 19 days, you mean not games? Um, yeah, I think that, uh, first of all, if, if somebody beats us, whether it's one or 101, I never just throw that out. I always feel like you can learn and the kids can see it on tape. So that's my perspective. And I think the fact that we won, I want us to feel good, but it was just one game is all it is. And as you said, we were playing a team that uh, uh, had not played in 19 days, had only had eight or nine practices. I forgot. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, I forgot what Chris had said. So we know that we got a team that wasn't what they're going to be seven days from now with two more games and three or four more. Brendan Marks, go ahead. Hey, Roy, uh, morning. We got to see after that game on Saturday, Sterling was out afterwards doing like one-on-one -on -one stuff with Walker when the guys were getting up those extra shots. Is, is there any sort of update on Sterling? Is that something where he could still factor in this season or, or what, what, where do sort of things sort of stand? Guys, I don't know, but I mean, they, they, people were trying to get me to put him in the game and, uh, you know, he's played half court. Um, sometimes he's gone up and down probably three or four times the last month, but he didn't practice. Uh, he didn't play in Wednesday's game. He didn't practice Thursday or Friday because we were trying to give him time off. And just uh, uh, I do not foresee him being a factor in the games this year. No. Do I foresee the chance that he could possibly get in the games and help us and help himself and change my opinion? You know, that's a possibility. But, guys, he hadn't played a game in two years. I mean, we're talking about Louisville – didn't play for 19 days. We got a guy who didn't play night, you know, in two years. Come on now. How the heck does anybody expect something like that to be a, a factor at all or definitely a major factor? We're just trying to get him through, get him through. And then perhaps as the, you know, the season winds down here, he'll get a little more confident and maybe we can give him some time. But I'm not counting on Sterling uh, doing anything to uh, change our team this year. I mean, seriously, just think about what we're asking and what we're talking about. Uh, Louisville uh, really looked out of whack because they hadn't had a game in 19 days. They've had eight or nine practices. This is a guy who hasn't played in two years. Thank you. Kip Coons, go ahead. Yeah, good morning, Roy. Uh, I was wondering, how did the Marquette game come around or uh, you know to, to be on your schedule and, and when you first heard they were interested were you at all surprised that a that a dookie would uh, do you a favor like that <laughs> well kip thanks uh, uh for saying good morning before you ask such a great question my gosh son hey uh same as last time marquette is one of the teams that we had had communication with before we scheduled northeastern marquette has lost some games themselves then when we found out for sure that we had lost the Boston College game, they called and said, hey, we're still interested in playing also. And it was a very easy discussion. It had nothing to do with uh, Wojo doing me a favor. It's Wojo doing something that he thought was good for his team as well. I mean, I, I, I like Steve. I think there's no question about that. I remember when he played and assistant at Duke, but I think he's trying to do something that – he thinks might help his team just like I'm doing something to help my team. I'm not going to do anybody a favor, period, unless it's going to be something good for my team. And I got to think that that's the way that uh, uh, that Steve uh, operates his team. But no, we had discussions last week, and then it when it came official that uh, Boston College was out. Uh, we had several conversations. Uh, over the weekend, I can't remember when we went out. But, guys, this was not something that was done in 13 minutes like me and Mike Bray changing the date earlier in the year. But uh, he's doing what he thinks is best for his team. Uh, we've got time for one more question from Andrew Jones. Go ahead, Andrew. Hey, Coach, the other night, staying on that topic, kind of the other night you mentioned that you still have two other games that can't – spots that can be made up. Is there any progress in that front? And I guess the only available opportunities would be between 
Syracuse and Duke next week, or can you kind of give us some of the background on that? Well, I don't I may be counting it wrong, or you may be counting it wrong. I don't know that we have two more slots that we can fill. I don't, I don't know. But, yes, we're having conversations with some people about – seeing if we can play another game in the middle of the week next week. But that's – we're just – it's all preliminary. It's not anything like what it got down to be with Northeastern and with uh, uh, Marquette. Or to follow up, uh, is there a, still a possibility at maybe Clemson or, or one of the other cancel or postponed ACC games coming into play, or would this be a non-conference game? We're having discussions with anybody and everybody and three different teams in the NBA as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Roy, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Bye-bye. All right, we'll bring on Chris Mack now from 